If we look at the current state of knowledge today, the issue of performance has been really beaten to death. In other words, we know all that we can possibly know about performance and how to make the rocket as efficient as possible. However, another issue that has not yet been resolved or addressed fully is the stability of, of rocket engines. That remains currently uh, one of the biggest issues that still confronts rocket scientists any time we try to develop new rocket systems. Ultimately, our goal is to be able to take any new rocket engine still in the design stage before it is built and be able to go back to the customer, to the sponsor and tell them whether it is expected to suffer from any type of instabilities or, or not early in the design process, not after the engine has already been developed. Uh, so if we step back a little bit and go back to the uh, first uh, liquid rocket engines that were developed uh, say in Germany and uh, all the way to the space shuttle main engine that was developed by Rocketdyne, what is common to all of these liquid rocket engines is that the fuel and the oxidizer are injected at the top of the chamber. In this particular design that we are working on, which is unconventional, the actual oxidizer is injected at the bottom of the chamber, just upstream of the nozzle, and it's injected in a tangential fashion, it's injected tangentially to the inner circumference, to the extent that the flow that comes in is going to spiral around and traverse the uh, chamber length twice before exiting, and that gives, gives it ample time to essentially combine with the fuel, to burn with the fuel, and convert the chemical energy of the fuel and the oxidizer into kinetic energy and the swirling uh, uh, motion itself adds good mixing and adds uh, performance uh, uh, increases to the, uh, to the uh, rocket itself. Orbitech started working on this concept uh, back in the early 90s and uh, they realized that this is a technology that has a lot of potential. If we were to harness the power of a cyclone or a tornado inside a rocket engine, uh, there are uh, quite a few benefits to be gained. And the analogy, the simple analogy uh, in layman's terms, um, is that of the top. If you take a top and you spin it, uh, the higher the spin that you give to it, uh, the longer it's going to spin. If you don't give it uh, a, a good spin, then it, it's going to wobble and go unstable and topple over. So in our case, uh, this will be perhaps one of the best uh, simple analogies that you could uh, take away from, from, from this comparison. In our case, we are spinning the flow into the engine, so the higher the speed of the flow coming into the engine, the more stable and the more coherent the motion uh, 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 gets. And so we're very, very happy with this result because that enables us to run the engine at uh, very high speeds, uh, thus providing uh, outstanding performance without having to uh, be concerned with issues of instability arising or evolving as a result of uh, uh, pushing the limits towards top performance.